Hey, does your knee hurt? Oftentimes, the knee pain is actually not coming from your knee. It's caused by something else. So what would that, that be, Sal? Knee. Yeah. You know, you know what? Uh, this, the, the reason why I wanted to say this is we had a, a question. Uh, on, on Not just one. We've had like three or four in the we last have, couple of weeks. We have. MAPS Prime Pro is a correctional exercise kind of based program. And all the major joints are in there that mm-hmm. you can address except for the knees. And oftentimes we get people messaging us, why aren't the knees on here? My knees hurt. And that's a common area that people have pain. Yeah. yeah. And so I wanted to explain a little bit around, about knee pain and what the most common reasons are that your knees tend to bother you. So the best explanation I can give is this, is that the, the knee joint itself, although it's this way more complex than the way I'm going to make it sound, it really only has two functions, right? It, it flexes and extends. So I can, I can bend my knee and I can straighten my knee, right? Flex and extend. I can't rotate the knee joint. I can't bend it laterally. I can only, you know, flex my knee and extend my knee. But the ankle joint and the hip joint that are attached closest to the knee, they're very dynamic, right? I can rotate my ankle to a certain degree. I can definitely bend it laterally, flex it and extend it. My hip joint, I can rotate it, bend it laterally. I can flex it. I can extend it. And so when those joints lack stability, they lack strength or mobility, what happens is the ligaments of the knee that keep it from doing anything but flexing and extending, all those ligaments that keep it from rotating and bending laterally, they have to bear the brunt of the pressure to prevent the knee from doing these things. So if your ankles and your hips are off, mm-hmm. oftentimes over time, you'll start to have knee pain. And you're like, whoa, it's something that's wrong well, with my knee. it's trying to make up for a lot of the stress that it needs to stabilize the knee. And, and, and it... it a lot of times, because your your ankle and your hips are so dynamic, you'll you'll get put in a lot of different angles, and your, your knee will tend to travel, you know, in one direction or the other, and to try and keep it stable. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, it just stresses it out, and then the ligaments take the brunt of the force. The yeah. same principles apply for the elbow too. So, yeah. if you're suffering from elbow pain, a lot of people are always looking for like exercises they can do or things they can do for the elbow itself. But many times, that's related to the wrist Very or the similar. shoulder. Yeah. So, if you have poor mobility in your shoulder or your wrist or lack stability and control in either of those joints, the stress goes to the elbow. So a lot of times you're looking at the area that's bothering you, thinking that there's something wrong there, but it's actually stemming from uh, one of the other joints. Yeah, think of it this way, right? Like if I I think of a, uh, a submission in jiu-jitsu called a heel hook, right? So if I took your foot, I straightened your leg out, and I go to twist your leg, but your hip won't rotate. For whatever reason, your hip lacks mobility. And I start twisting the ligaments of the knee are going to have to hold tight. And if I twist hard enough, I'm yeah. going to tear your knee. And so it's this is sort of your last line of defense. It is. And so this is the problem. So people will squat and lunge and deadlift and do all these different exercises. And their ankles and knees aren't doing, excuse me, their ankles and hips aren't doing what they're supposed to. And over time, you know, when the knee flexes and extends, the kneecap kind of tracks. Uh, there's like a little groove in the in the femur and the kneecap tracks in it and things have to be in the right position. Well, if it's pr- if pressure's, you know, being put in one direction, Things start to track wrong. The joint st- starts to get undue pressure over time. That builds inflammation. Then you go to the doctor. They image your knee, mm-hmm. and they go, "Oh, you have inflammation in your knee," but they're not. They never address right, or oftentimes they don't address the root cause, which is it's because your ankles are tight or immobile or weak, or your hips are tight or immobile and weak. And so this is why, oftentimes, oftentimes the solution for chronic knee pain resides there and not in the actual you know, doing stuff with the knee itself type of deal. The the low back is like this too. A lot of times clients will have, you know, say they have a bad back or their low back is always bothering them and they think it's their low back where the issue is. And a lot of times it's related to your your hips, the Mm -hmm. inability to control and have stability in your hips and mobility in them is what is causing the low back to to be stressed a lot of times too. Yeah, and think about this way, right? Like you're like, oh, my knees bother me when I squat. So I'm going to put knee sleeves or knee wraps, right? What those are doing is they're doing the job or they're, they're, it's like your ligaments except externally. And now you've right. added more ligaments and support. So now the knee doesn't hurt as much. Again, right. not addressing the root issue, which is when you squat, maybe your knee is trying, it's you're pushing it you know, laterally or right. there's some rotate. Sometimes if your feet, your ankles are tight and you go down to squat, there's this rotational pressure that happens because really tight ankles, when you squat down, they want to turn out. But if your feet are grounded, that rotational pressure then gets taken on by the knee. Like, God, oh, it's weird when I squat heavy, I have this weird 
pain inside my knee. Like there's must be something right. wrong with my knee. And it's just a little tiny like degree of, of change. If it's off track, just that little bit, like your analogy with the sliding glass door. Yeah. Like it, just that little like fractional inch that it's off. Uh, you know, it just, it ruins the whole thing. Like the whole thing is, is, you know, based on the fact that it stays stable in these movements. And if it's not, there's lots of compensations that have to occur, which stresses out, uh, you know, the, the entire system. Well, it's really obvious too. Like when you go through maps prime pro and when, and most often when someone has like a knee issue, it's, it's normally on one side or the other more than the other side. Yeah. Right. So this is where it, it becomes really obvious of what the issue is, is when you get into and you do the 90, 90 test, or you do the ankle mobility test in prime pro, if the side that you have pain in your knee, also has issues with the uh, in the ninety ninety position and or the ankle. You know this is where it's coming from. That's and that's how you know you start. You need to work on that. It's like you know, okay, I've got pain on the side. When I get down in this ninety ninety, oh wow, I can't even get my knee on the ground or I can't lift my back heel up in that position. Oh, there's obviously a, a stability issue and control and mobility issue in that hip. That's where you need to start is addressing that. And then the same thing goes for the ankle. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, I I, I experienced this myself um, a couple few years ago. I was on vacation and uh, I was working out in a hotel gym. This was in Mexico, so it's real warm and kind of humid or whatever, and the, the, there were marble floors, and as I was leaving the gym, I, I fell down the stairs, and my left foot, I sat on it and kind of slid, and I thought, for sure, when I got to the bottom, I'm like, I, I tore something. Yeah. Now, when I stood up, luckily, I didn't tear anything, but I did do a number on my left ankle, and since then, my left ankle's always had a little bit less mobility than my right, so still to this day, if I squat heavy and if there's any issues with my form, I feel it in my left knee. I never feel it in my left ankle, but that's where it's coming from. Because as my left ankle is tight, that's exactly what happens. As I squat, I know what happens to compensate my leg wants to rotate. But mm -hmm. because my foot is so grounded, I get that rotational pressure in my left knee, which goes to my meniscus, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so then I'm squatting. So I'm bending the joint. It's a snowball with this, effect up the kinetic chain. Yes, and I'm and I'm, I'm bending the knee while I'm with weight, but the meniscus is holding tight, preventing things from twisting. With enough weight and reps, you're going to start to develop pain. And this is the these are the causes of of chronic pain. Which, by the way, this is different than an acute injury, right? So if if your knee knee hurts because you just tore your knee, yeah, okay, that's different, <laughs> that's <a bit> right? Different. <laughs> but if you're like, oh, my knee, you know, it, it always bothers me, and it's been an issue I've had for a couple of years, and I don't know what the deal is, and when I walk too much or run too much or, you know, do lots of squats, it starts to bother my knee. It's coming from a a, a dysfunction, and it's usually the joints closest to the knee. Like in this case, in this case, the, the knee is surrounded by or connected to very in con in the, in the, in comparison, very dynamic joints. You can do a lot of things with your ankle and your hip, especially your hip. Your knee doesn't do those things. It just yeah. flexes and extends. So that's where, you know, a lot of the, the pain comes from. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.